You're good to go. War Master by John French from Legacies of Betrayal. War Master. The word hung in silence as it left Horace's lips. Beyond the high crystal flex window, the light of distant stars hung in sickly folds of gas giants and dust. Armored and enthroned, the Primarch of the 16th Legion gazed into the shadows as through uh, waiting for the answer. The title is heavy around my neck. Horus, Lubrical, father, son, friend, enemy. All are lost beneath the weight of that one word. He turned his head, looking, looking into the black iron arms of his throne. His eyes moved to the bronze of the mace as tall as a mortal man. It was called Worldbreaker, and he had accepted it from his father's hand along with the title of War Master and Command of the Great Crusade. His gaze, his gaze came to rest upon the eagle-headed pommel. The ghost of a smile touched his lips. Our father never spoke of what it meant, only the limit of its authority. A dangerous word to leave unqualified. Perhaps he intended me to discover its meaning. Perhaps he did not care what it meant, as long as it freed him from us, his sons. Perhaps he did not know what it would mean for his Imperium. Horus raised his hand. A column of hololithic light filled the air before the throne. The shapes of men and women formed in the grainy projection, twisting, shouting, dying, their pleas and screams looping over and over as the thunder of bolters uh, fire rolled through the silence. He knows now, he nodded to himself. The reflected light of the hololith flickering across the liquid black of his eyes. The fire is lit, and all that was cast to the wind. We are committed, he and I, my brothers, our legions, all humanity's futures bound together in this circle of blood. We are, so, we are all the storm now. The Imperium will fall or rise by my hand. Fall and fall and fall. Slowly, he stood, his armor whispering, clicking. He gestured again, and more cones of cold light surrounded him, tur uh, turning with images of blind faces. Some screamed with words, blood, and smoke spewing forth from their mouths, while others droned on in their dead, monotonous voices. Horace inclined his head, listening. All this blood. The screams of change. Anarchy is this age is king. We fall apart, and this war slips from our fingers to spin into oblivion, he said, his voice clear even over the cacophony. Horus turned and watched the holographic recordings bloom around him. The throne room danced with ghost light of a thousand messages. This van was to burn in silence so that our war could be won before it truly began. The angel's wings were to be broken at my feet, and still failures come tumbling one over the other, on and on and on. He paused, his eyes fixing upon the image of a shrunken astropath. Kauf burned, yet our brother lives. Rabute, why is Rabute? Rebute with his scratching quills, his plans, his hope. Too understanding, too strong, too damned perfect. Horus let out a long breath and turned back to his empty throne. I wish he was with us. With a flicker of his fingered blade, blade fingers, the throng of images vanished and silence flowed back with the return of of the shadows. Horus shook his head, his eyes still fixed upon the throne. You would say I would listen too much to Alpharius and Logar, that a war fought with deceit is doomed to fail. Perhaps you would be right. The Hydra does not see all, 
and now his blindness places a knife at his own back. Korax, Korax would have been, would not have made such an error. He gave him a reckless laugh. Strange, is it not, that so many I wish beside me stand against me, while all at my back are only the flawed and the damaged. I am a master of broken monsters. Slowly he began to circle the edge of the great hololithic table, the sound of his footsteps lost in the echoing sounds. I cannot control them or their sons. They'd know it, Motaran and Perabo and the rest. They can all feel it. They all know that this war is no longer something that can be guided, only ridden out. But they never understood me, not truly. They understand less with each passing second. They doubt. They think that I have lost my way. I can see it in their hearts. The pettiness, the pride, the seeds driving them on, feeding the tempest with such creatures I must make the future. He stopped again at the foot of the throne and reached out. His hand closed over war break, world breaker's haft. With casual ease, he raised it up so the chamber's thin light caught every dent scar upon the polished metal. A thousand battles, 10,000, 10 times, 10 times, 10,000 to bring about the new age. All the certainties of the past torn down, all the beliefs that made them turn to the ashes. War on every front stretched across time until none can know when the final blow will come. There is no disaster, for all disasters serve me alone. The storm rises only so that the thunderbolt may fall. He looked down at his throne again, shaking his head sadly. His arm relaxed and Worldbreaker rested at his side. His gaze shifted as though they were looking at something beyond what lay in front of him. No other would have dared this, not even you. Perhaps that's why our, our father chose me. That's why that was his only moment of honesty. Then his gaze focused and hardened, his black eyes like reflecting pools in the face of an unforgiving king. Upon the arm of the throne, the skull of Barris Manus stared back at Horus with empty sockets that had once been eyes. Then fracture web of cracks ran across the perfect dome of the slain Primarch's crown, spiraling back to a splintered pit in his temple. Even reduced to polished bone, the skull seemed to radiate strength and defiance. It does not matter how the galaxy burns, only that it does. Warmaster, that's what it means, my brother. The strength to do what must be done. Was War Master by John French from Legacies of Betrayal. Go. Strike and Fade by Guy Haley from Legacies of Betrayal. Where once there had been many sons of Nocturne, now there are only four Brother Jafor, Grim Hyphast. Hey, young neophyte Gosol and the ever-silent Danok. They crouched among the rocks above the trail. None knew the others well, and that had come together at all amidst the turmoil of the massacre was as great a miracle as any. They spoke in whispers. They dared not use the, uh, the wider box neck for days. Their voices barely carried above the wind and Donok's repetitive sharpening of his combat blade. Gosol flexed his shoulders stretching his numbed limbs. When will it come? Jofor quieted and raised his hands. Patience, Neophyte. And stay still, Hefa said. Your emotions will betray us to the enemy. Kosol face reddened at high passwords. Sorry, masters. Don't be sorry. That's not how your training should it's not how your training should be. But you will be strong before it. The scout nodded. High fast grunted bitterly. If we live the old warrior had no patience with the youth. Whether that was his nature or merely the anger at the recent atrocities he had witnessed, Jofor could not yet tell. Brother, mind the spirit of the neophyte. 
he urged him. What of all spirits? My dreams are tapestries of gross betrayal, where brothers slaughtered by those they once called friend. Just have a care for the lad. Chabor set it down his weapon to where the improvised explosion, explosives had been planted. I worry more for Donak. He's not spoken at all since we found him. The flame in his eyes are low. The forges of his heart have been quenched. I fast looked at him. You see, there are things even too great for a space marine to bear. Tell me you are untouched by it. Chabor sp uh, spoke so quietly, his uh, voice was barely audible. I'm not untouched, brother. My heart's ache. My mind cannot contain the enormity of the slaughter. My eyes are sore with sorrow. He turned to Hypas. But my rage outmatches it all. We four are from different companies within the Legion, granted. But all of us were born of the fire and fury. Our brotherhood is unshakable. There is succor for me in that, and power. All the other legions turn upon the sons of Nocturne, for nothing can break the bonds between us. There will come a reckoning. That's all I can say to any who doubt us. I fast noted solemnly, and he spoke as calmly. And that is why we follow you, brother. All is not lost, said Chafor. That the traitors spend so much of their time scouring this particular area gives me hope. I do not believe we are the last servants of the Emperor on his fan five. Behind his visor, Hyphas chuckled. And if we are? To foreship it. Then we will fight to the very end. Silence now. The are to come. They all held themselves still as the rocks around them. They waited until the faint sound of engines reached their enhanced earrings. Kosol looked up. Do you hear that? Like this. Do we withdraw? To foreship his head. Too late. Look. A figure came around the curve in the track. He was clearly a legionary, but unarmed, with the welds crisscrossing his pale flesh. He staggered towards the defile with the salamander's booby traps waited. Now, Gosol produced a detonator switch. The Jafor held up his hand urgently. Wait, there is no, there, that is no traitor that runs before them. The sound of the bikes built to a roar as a figure in night blue armor veered around the mountainside. He rode the narrow, uneven path with breathtaking skill. He chased the stumbling finger, lashing him with a cruel whip. Harsh laughter grating from his stylish helmet augmenters. Four other bikers followed, lightning marks on their battle plates sullied with dry blood. Hatred boiled in the eyes of Jofor. He looked at Gosol. The scout's face was, uh, was flushed with excitement. Wait for the captain uh, to get clear. The lone legionary was still within the blast zone, but the bikers were gaining on him. Any longer, and they might too escape from the worst of it. Jafar felt, felt his guts was, Now! Gosol! Now! There was a terrific explosion, a blast of multiple charges erupting out of the lengths of the shadows. The leading night lord was hurled from the track like a rag doll, his bike plunging end over end down the steep mountainside. His followers skidded to a halt, frantically scanning through the clouds, obscuring dust to see who had attacked them. Jafar surged forward, aiming for the one traitor who had removed his helmet. He would pay dearly. A boiling jet of Prometheum from Jafor's flamer engulfed the warrior. He fell screaming from his mount, his flesh sloughing from his bones. The others spun their bikes and open fired. Treachery had left their skills undimmed. Both their shells tore up uh, the rocky terrain, but Hyphas and Donok fired with impunity from cover. One night lord raised his plasma pistol before a bolt of shot took him in the chest and he slumped over the handlebars. There were two traitors left. One gun, his engine, and his comrades intensified his fire, rearing up the mountainside, fishtailing madly. He rode his bike up the incline toward Jofor. He brought a chainsaw down at the salamander's head, but his bike slipped sideways on a scree-covered slope, and he reached out to stay his fall. His hand never touched the ground. A bolt exploded within the traitor's gauntlet, spraying the ruined flesh and metal. As the warrior fell, Jofor looked to his left, brother Donak stride forward. His weapon held level in both hands. He advanced calmly on the fallen night lord, putting a single shot through his eyelids. The last traitor swung his bike around to bring its twin bolters to bear, but Hyphas brought him down, blowing out his chest plate along with a ribcage it shielded. The silence was sudden and horrifying. 
the air stank of propellant and murder. Jafor uh, wrinkled his nose. Well fought, brother. By a thousand pinpricks, we must bleed them. They died more easily than they deserved, I fast muttered, advancing warily between the bodies. Then he turned to go so. Quickly now, young scout. Strike and fade. Let's strip the bodies. He went down to the dead, and Donut and Goso followed him, rifling through the saddlebag with the nearest bike. Hyphas uh, halted suddenly, doubling back towards them. What have we told you, lad? Leave the gun. Take the nutrient packs and the ammunition. He stopped to put a bolt in the head of a traitor who stirred. Night Lord's bolts fit a salamander's gun. A Night Lord's water bottle will quench a salamander's thirst. Goso seemed unsure. It, it feels wrong. These warriors are cousins. They were raised up by the Emperor to fight alongside us. Their cause has been our cause. Their lord brother to our lord. But now we are opposed. They are the enemy, and we are the righteous. Jafor did not hear his brother's words. He knelt beside the, uh, the Night Lord's fallen captive, and his heart sank when he saw the fist side hole in the legionary's back. He rolled him over, seeing the emblem of a raven guard tattooed on his shoulder. The legionary's eyes fluttered. Jofor took him in his arms. I killed you, Kingsman. The raven guard spoke. Oh, brother, you have saved me. Do not weep. I would have weeped for all of us, my friend, loyalists and traitor alike. To slay our own kind is no small thing, no matter the enormity of their crimes. They are our own no longer. The darkness has overtaken them. The legionary was racked with a bloody cough. Listen to me. You must fight on. Fight and survive. And with you, survive with us. The raven guard smiled and meekly shook his head. His eyes closed. Jafor stayed with him until uh, the weak beating of his heart ceased. When his brothers approached, Jafor pointed to the mountain peaks high above the trail. He did not speak, for in that moment he did not trust the authority of his voice. As they made their way from the ambush, he he went from one night lord's went to one of the night lord's corps. With his knife, he scratched the mark of his legion into the warrior's grieve. The work was rapid, but fine. A dragon head of pure silver scorings, roaring outrage against betrayal. Let them see, Joforma muttered. Let them see that the shadows of Isfan harbor the flames of vengeance, and that those flames will burn them all. Then he departed, following his brothers away from the tra traitor's inevitable pursuit. That was Strike and Fade by Guy Haley from Legacies of Betrayal. The Eightfold Path by Anthony Reynolds from Legacy of Betrayal. I stand waiting, dueling axe held loosely in my hand. It's not gore, child. That roaring monster is purely for killing. This bout is not sanguis extremis. The weapon is bound to my wrist with a chain in honor of the Deshian gladiators. I've seen their bones. I've walked their de the side of their death. I've helped enact Angron's revenge upon their killers. Never met them, yet their deaths have been made known. Ah, who we are becoming. We are slaves to their memory. That blood Khan. Morok, stripped to the waist as a mine. His slab muscled torso is crisscrossed with old wounds, scars upon scars. All of them are on his front. He has never shown uh, an enemy his back. No collar. There's blood, I respond. I can see in his eyes he's disappointed. He nods in agreement anyway. The Legion has bled enough. There have been too many deaths in the pits since Angron's change, his extension. That was the word his brother Logar used to describe it, at least. And as ever, Angron has changed. So two of his sons. The circulating spectators are noisy. They bray like animals. They're hungry. 
for the sight of blood. The butcher's nail demanded of us all. They press into the soft flesh of my mind, grinding and wrenching at my pain receptors. They're getting worse. Even at their most dormant, they make themselves known. Corks scurrying into my brain. The screws turn and the nails hammer. The camaraderie of my fellow world eaters cannot raise a smile for me. Food tastes like ashes. There's no joy to be had but that found in killing. Opening the arteries, cleaving flesh, taking skulls, that's what the nails want from me. They have shunned, they have shunned my brother these last weeks. Dark thoughts haunt me. I've taken to walking the decks of the Conqueror alone, stalking her quarters compulsively as though the mere act of walking kilometers upon kilometers will give me some sudden insight, some direction, some hope. I had not intended to come here tonight, but the nails brought me to the pits. Once again, I heard the siren's call of clashing blades and weapons hacking into flesh. I was unable to turn away. The promise of even a moment's relief from the incessant grind upon my cortex was an offer that was, tonight, irresistible. The nails want me to fight again. I've not been here since I've humbled Erebus. That wretch's cowardice denied me the kill. The nails punished me for it. But I'm here now, and already the pressure has eased. Barak takes his place opposite me in the circle. He will fight with his usual armament, a pair of long curved blades, swords against axe. Such a fight never lasts long. I attack. It's the only way I know. My speed takes him by surprise, almost ending the fight in the first breath. He recovers well, though. We are both dancing to the tune of the nails, and it's an ugly turn. Few within the Legion fight with grace anymore. I block a blade that flashes from my throat, forcing me to sway aside from its twin coming in low for a disemboweling strike. I kick Barak away, slamming my foot squarely into his solar plexus. He staggers back. I wait for him, rolling my wrist, sp uh, spinning the dueling axe as I adjust my grip. He snarls as he throws himself at me. I meet him, head on. Barak is one of the devourers, one of Angron's bodyguards. The Primarch never needed bodyguards, of course. Not before, and now. Chained and bound below deck, the notion that he needs protection is laughable. The devourers are little more than his gallowers, an ignoble task for what should have been the Allegiance elite. Block, sweep, sideswipe, strike! This is not real. These fights are nothing but distraction to ease the pain until the real battle is joined once again. Then the Legion can be unleashed. The thought of releasing Angron from his prison is not a comforting one. And what of us? What of his sons? Are we doomed to a similar fate? Will the last of our humanity be bled out as well, leaving us nothing more than chained lunatics? The nails punish me as I feel their as they feel my aggression falter. They stab into my brain, blinding me with white burst of agony. A rock almost takes me from them. In my distraction, I only avoid his slashing blades by a hair's breadth. I can see the frustration in him. He wants to test himself against the warrior that had bested the Dark Apostle. That was different. That was true. This is merely a charade. One of his blades scraped along the haft of my axe, almost grazing my knuckles. That would have been the first blood. Though the result would have made Argyll tall laugh. Perhaps it is the memory of my old friend that adds some fuel to what comes next. A backhand blow sends me tumbling to the deck. Something drips on the back of my head. Blood? Did he graze me without me feeling it? No. We both glance up, the fight forgotten. The ceiling is bleeding. Another drop hits me, and then another. It's trickling down the walls, and then I hear Angron's roar. He 
He's been raging for weeks, but this is different. It silences the crowd. The sound wells up through the grilled decks, vibrating through the steel. It makes the walls shudder and groan. It crackles through unpowered box horns. It is enough to warp reality itself. My heart begins to thunder in time with a pounding in my head. It blurs with Angron's din, rising with intensity, a building crescendo. My fingers tighten around the haft of my axe. A growl escapes my lips. The pounding obliterates everything. I know it is coming and I am powerless to prevent it. It comes on faster than it has ever come before. I barely have time to take a breath. It hits me like a tidal wave and in an instant I'm drowning. Taking the axe in both hands, I surge to my feet. Everything goes red. The stink of blood and raw flesh is the first thing I notice. The second is the roar, not Angron. The demon Primarch has fallen silent, but the roar of the clap crowd is just as deafening. My vision returns slowly, the red haze lifting to reveal the aftermath of a butchery. Blood coats my hands and arms to the sleeve. It drips off my axe. There's blood in my mouth, too. Caking my lips and chin is not my own. I look at the carnage I have wrought. Barak is no more. What is left is a rune, the work of a psychopath. The crowd roars its approval. It's sickening. I want to be away from here, away from the screams and the carnal stink. A figure step forward. My eyes are unfocused, yet the urge to bury my axe in his blurry face makes my fingers twitch. Rock was of the devourer, Khan. By rights, his place is yours now. That actually made me laugh. It comes out as a bloody cough. Spittle, sprain, and goblets of congealed gore fly from my lips. I drop my axe. It falls with a dull claim. I wipe my, I wipe my hands down my arms. Blood sloughs away, dripping from my fingertips. I look around like a dreamer waking from a deep slumber. The fury of the crowd, their anger and bloodlust, batters me. These are my sworn battle brothers. This is my legion. We will no longer walk the crimson path. I see that clearly now. We're walking another path entirely. A road far more damning. I have thought it was superstitious nonsense. Nothing more than the religious ranting of the 17th Legion. It is not. Sadly, it is not. We are walking the Eightfold Path. And there can be no turning back. That was the Eightfold Path by Anthony Reynolds from Legacies of Betrayal.